Good luck. Uh, welcome back. We are in week 196 of uh, the teaching ladder, where we get to play a higher rated opponent and a lower rated opponent, and hopefully learn something from the experience, um, and be able to um, yeah share this with you, the viewers, as well. All right, so last time I chickened out of playing third file rook when we got this far. Um, hmm. No, let's just do it. No guts, no glory. All right. Um, now to prevent a fork I think it's prudent for me to move my gold to the center file or I could lock close the diagonal here but I'm not so convinced in that approach um yeah we'll defend this way okay our opponent plays hmm wait a second one, two, three, four. One, two, three. I cannot win a pawn here. Whenever I pushed that pawn prematurely, I was always afraid of losing it. To some dumb tactic. But that's not going to happen here. Um. All right. Now, last time we caught them in a position where they couldn't push this pawn. Um, that was deeply uncomfortable for them. Uh, last time also, the critique came across that um, a lot of ideas were considered. Um... One was that moving my silver uh, would have made things better, different, I don't know. Um. Hmm. This is just so wildly aggressive, isn't it? I don't understand. All right, let's use the silver. So this could move across and block the rook's defense across the rank. Um, it could also move and block the bishop. But the silver cannot move to where the rook is located. I'm not totally sure where this is ultimately going, but sure could make a short trip here and if the pawn advances i could push this again uh which would be wildly risky and probably would be better prepared by moving my rook here first and then like doing these tactics Another fun idea is that I could push this and build high Mino. All right, the bishop is loose, so I could exploit that right this minute. 
This is ridiculous. Um, just like, why is everything hanging in the craziest possible way here? I don't understand it. I mean, I'm Gota, right? I should push and let wild stuff fly here. Um, but I don't need to. They're not going to defend the bishop next turn anyway. Silver, 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 silver. Prevents my crazy shit. Um, yeah, let's just spend one turn castling before the board explodes. Uh, and we'll deal with the explosion next turn. I don't even know if the king's going to go this way anyhow. <sighs> okay. Okay. Fine. We have this tactic once more. It's going to be pulling at my mind the rest of the game if I don't try it. So let's try it. There are so many holes in this position. It's just... How did we even get here? To me, it looks like somehow I've gained the initiative, or I'm calling the shots, or I don't know how you say it. Um, what is this nonsense? Okay. Maybe bishop takes is safer here, but... Um, no, I don't want to see bishop takes rook takes, in fact. Okay. That seems extremely dangerous. Unless I've severely overlooked something. I don't understand. What is this? Okay, they could sacrifice the rook for this gold and then take my hanging bishop. So that's a tactic. Um, if I drop a pawn here, rook takes anyway. Rook takes, bishop takes, knight out. I don't understand. Silver up. Rook takes, bishop takes, they take this. Wait, no. That's so weird. Silver up, they could exchange the rook for a silver and I get a bishop. Welcome. 
Uh, we've reached a... If I move my silver, they just can defend their bishop for a turn. There are tactics everywhere here. Um, pawn drop, rook takes, I take, they take. Um, knight up. I think I have the better of this. Even though they have a rook. I don't understand. Or if pawn drop, if I take the rook, and if they take my bishop, I could move the knight out. So I'll have a bishop pair. I don't have anywhere effective to drop a rook. Um... So many tactics. I think advancing the silver is probably the best move here. I just don't know what they'll do against it. All right, well, I don't know what's going on. We'll have to rely on our opponent to clue us in. We had a nice, beautiful proverb up there, and now we have a fun other quote, but it'll do. <laughs> um, Yes, yeah, so the proverb we were looking at earlier was attack with the rook, knight, bishop, and silver. Um, and I guess I'm attempting to do that. Oh, I didn't even consider they could do the rook takes this pawn. Um, which would be insane, but it could be considered. they do take the pawn, uh, I could take this bishop, they take my rook, and I can kind of corral the rook with the knight, but then they cut the line between my bishop and my knight, then I can jump the knight out and start attacking the king directly. Um, it's one possibility. Another is that I just take the rook, they take my bishop, and my rook is kind of marooned. I don't like that possibility. <laughs> they could also sacrifice the rook on this square instead. Um, yeah, there's a lot of tactics. 
I think in most cases I'm willing to give my rook for a bishop. Even though I don't see anything conclusive. Well, because I'm also potentially getting other pieces. Plus a bishop drop helps me corral the king and maybe get other other pieces too. Um, of course I'm concerned about the possibility of my opponent getting a rook, but... I mean, I guess that's just part of life when I'm playing against this opening. I just have to accept that I have that chance I might not have a rook, and my opponent might have both rooks, and it could get very complicated. Hmm. Is it so bad for me to take a rook and give the bishop, though? Like, as much as it, I'm not comfortable with it. Okay, what? What the hell? What in the world? So... Okay. I've just spooked my opponent. Apparently. Um... I don't know how else to describe this. Well, so now I can move the rook over and then do this exchange and then drop the rook back here. Uh, hmm. Is there a downside to this? Oh, even better. Yeah, the pin is in effect. Oh, that's wild. Alright, let's defend my rook. So now that we have this pin here... Well, I guess the gold defending the bishop splits the pin. It's not decisive, but I can still exchange my bishop here and then drop a rook back here. And then they have stuff hanging everywhere. But said, pawn drop and a bishop exchange could still be favorable, especially if there's a fork to follow. So, old pawn takes, 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 fork. They put the rook. I don't know. The rook's maybe not taking the pawn here. But either way, I've got an initiative now. Oh, also, there's this bishop drop forking two generals. Although, I guess the opponent has a bishop drop defending both generals, but yeah. I could take, they take back, and then I promote, and I'm hitting the bishop. But 
but then they promote over here. Um, if I exchange, I mean, the plan was to exchange here. Let's just get this over with. Um, all right, my silver continues advancing. There's a possibility that I've missed lots of tactics. Um, yeah, what can you say? There's a near certainty that tactics were missed here. My opponent could try to promote the rook over here. I could just let them, and I could bring my knight out and cause some chaos. If the silver approaches my rook, I have a bishop drop to take this out. And they could try to defend this, but defense won't hold forever. Um, I could also push pawn 5-5. Five, five. Inquire where the rook is. I can move silver 5-5. Five, five. Why would I do any of these things, though? Well, no, this pawn up gives my rook somewhere to run to if the opponent chases my rook. Um. The fork also does the same thing. Sure. I can pretend to be a Shang-Chi expert. Uh, which I suppose starts with pretending that I know how to pronounce the word. Um, I did watch some videos on YouTube about it. Um, as our Shogi community was uh, learning this game as well. But uh, I did not... There's just so much to understand, isn't there? I didn't get too far with studying it. So I probably hallucinated some tactics here that just aren't real. Uh, I could push... After we exchange here, though, I could push this pawn. It's chaos. Um... Uh, 
Uh, what else can I consider? Bishop, Rook, Silver. <laughs> Traps my Silver. Uh, let's not do that. Okay, so I'm going to apply pressure toward the king. None of my sacrifices seem to get anywhere, so... Or rather, if I drop these pieces and try to sacrifice, I don't know, my bishop here for the gold, if they do rook takes... I'm just not seeing any way that my rook can break into this position. So we're going to find some other way to enter that position. They might drop something right here, and things could get quite scary. Um, but I might have a silver drop in response to whatever they drop here. Maybe. I have no idea. Hmm. Ah. Uh, yeah. Shang-Chi, I think, Chinese chess is um, an extremely tactical game. Uh, international chess or Western chess also is extremely tactical. I just don't have a good handle of how Chinese chess tactics work. Um, the fact that you have knights that have interesting movements, and you also have cannons, uh, just really, I, I think it, it's quite complicated. It's a beautiful game, though. Hmm. Well, we've got a complicated position. I do not understand. Uh... 
I'm not going to pretend to understand that. This can't possibly be what they were planning. They cannot drop a pawn on my rook's head because of Nifu. If they drop a silver, I can swing the rook back to hit the bishop. They do nothing if this bishop drop, and or I can take this pawn in either order. But also, I could still swing the rook back to hit the bishop anyway, or I could drop the bishop on this diagonal, or even this one. Yeah, I thought so. It's greedy. All right, you got my pawn. Congratulations. Was that what you wanted?
30秒40秒50秒。What the hell? <laughs> Can we make this more complicated? 30秒40秒50秒12345秒, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33,
30秒40秒50秒30秒40秒50秒1Round and around and around in circles we go. The chaos does end somewhere. They probably drop a rook here, further splitting their castle. And then we exchange bishops and drop the bishop here, promote back here, and then take the knight. Probably. It's possible. They might also drop something here. Fish, I don't know. Hmm. Well spotted. Thirty seconds. Forty seconds. Maybe I should have moved my gold up. Am I ever going to learn this lesson? So if they drop, I can retreat. They can continue dropping. Oh, if they drop, I could also fork. And pick off whatever they drop. Um,
30秒40秒50秒Am I getting checkmated? Ticks, 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 you know? I don't see a mate. Like, sure, of course I would have loved to promote my bishop. But, you know... Saving my king comes first. And so now we've taken their dragon off sides. And I have two pieces I can attack their castle with. They drop on the head here. I drop a knight. They take. I take. I drop again. I guess they drop a silver in defense. I don't know what else they do here. Maybe they have to drop the bishop in defense. And 
and maybe I'm forced to exchange here because I don't see anything else I can do. I could take the lance and then take the prawn, but it's no good. Thank Hmm. They don't have a silver. Oh, yeah, that is problematic. That's massively problematic here. Um. Hmm. Let's pretend it's not a problem and see if they notice. Sanjudio Well, I've got a knight, and pretty much nothing I can do with it. Hmm. I was expecting a rook drop. The rook drop allows the dragon to sit here. 
Whereas here, maybe somehow I squeal out of it. If I'm, like, extremely lucky. But, um... Probably not. I'm probably still dead lost. Yeah, like, Sunday Night Drop deal. here still seems to seal the deal. Or I guess they were wanting this lance in the corner. That's why they Sunday did deal. this. Okay, yeah, Night Drop still seems to seal the deal here. Although, I could take the night. Like, yeah, I'm super dead, but could be worse. Um... The bishop's not the best attacking piece, so we'll offer the bishop here. If gold takes gold, then things work themselves out. Um, hmm. Which do I take? Okay, I have to take this. Otherwise, I get instantly mated. Um, granted, like this other way, I'm still getting mated. It's just not instantaneous. There's still some opportunity for the opponent to misplay. Not much. But we can still fight. Nicely spotted. Um, yeah, they used a similar tactic in a previous game, if I remember correctly. So, do I have anything here? Thought I did until a second ago. Oh. Uh, nope. No, I do not. Well, there's one thing. It's not very good, but... We can tie up all of our pieces trying to defend this. It's a disaster, but, um, it's legal. Now if they do token takes gold, I have to do gold takes, and they drop another pawn and the cycle repeats, and I just keep giving away all my pieces. But this is the best I have here. Like, attempting to run away is just futile. Though maybe it was worth pursuing no yeah well attempting to run here might bear some fruit
Mm. Okay. Uh, that I missed. Alright, that'll do it. Nice. Well played. Cool. So then, after having played the game, we get to review it. I tend to recommend we review games from the top, because otherwise we'll never get back to the beginning. Uh, so... Alexi recommends we start with move 83, so we'll start with move 83. Uh, 5-2 Tokin. 5-2 Tokin. Oh yeah, well obviously. Yeah. Yeah, this is what I was looking at. Yeah, this, uh, yeah, so we can look at this, sure, that's fine. I know last time I did an extended game review, um, we ended up looking at something not terribly important, and missing out on more important points. So I should put my own perspective in check. Uh, yeah, like... Yeah, there's... This is such a common... Like, the one space gap dragon is named as such. It is ferocious. Yeah, and in fact, you don't even need your second rook to checkmate here. So, yeah, that's pretty cool. Okay. Oh. I guess I could hand over control as well. I don't mind handing over control of the review, because... Um, yeah, I've been swamped and not had a chance to study this opening slash system. So, I guess the lesson I'm taking from these sumashogi is that I need to resign the game earlier so that there's not a fixation on this. But it's good to give the opponent opportunities to practice checkmates in this latter format. Um, very nice. Mm -hmm. Cool. So I'm curious what they think. Um, if they have strong thoughts or opinions about the game, because it was a pretty wild game. I was annoyed that no matter how I could get a bishop or how I could get a rook, uh, there was never a case where I could drop them effectively. Yeah. yeah. All of my rook drops and bishop drops were useless. So... My stream is still way back in the game. Oh. Well, that's unfortunate. Yeah, apparently I've dropped 42% of the frames here. Um, so, sure, yeah, we'll start analysis from the top. I'll close Discord in case that helps with um, 
the live stream performance, but yeah, it's tragic that 42% have been dropped. Um, oh, cool. Uh, my opponent prepared some lines. However, I uh, feel the gold should be on 7 8 before moving the silver. Oh, I see. Yeah. Yeah, maybe that was the key point of this opening. I just find it incredible that they have time to do everything. They build a castle, they attack and take the center. Um, I, did, I was just stunned that they had time for all of these things, and I had time for nothing. Maybe moving my gold to 5-2. I don't know. <sighs> yeah, it's... This whole... Everything I tried here didn't work out. Um... I should at some point play 3-7 Promote. Hmm. Okay. Hmm. I'm not sure. If... Like, there was a position where I could have promoted on 3-7. And I thought tactically that didn't work out. And just strengthen their castle. Um, yeah. Either 38 or 40. So they take back here. Is there a purpose to this? I don't understand it. Uh, yeah, I just really don't know what's going on. Oh, give me one second to fix something else here. I want to make sure I don't run out of disk space for local recording. Just in case. Okay, this doesn't strengthen the castle, but it loosens it. But... Hmm. Hmm. Did I ask why he dropped it there? Um... I don't... I'm not sure. Oh, wait. I actually do have... A, yeah, that's mate on the move, isn't it? Okay, I missed that during the game. That's not great. <sighs> well... Let's see, what else? What else can we learn here?
Yeah. I haven't seen this sort of pattern before, but it's pretty cool. Maybe my rook shouldn't be here. Maybe it should be on any other square. Um, okay. Had they taken the pawn, I was considering dropping this here. So, yeah, I didn't think they would take here. Granted, I don't, I doubt that I could use a rook effectively. But, um, maybe I could somehow. Hmm. I just, like, what's that silver doing? I don't understand it. Yeah, this is a very different game. I don't. Doesn't make sense to me. Probably my takeaway is that I need to study this opening and come up with a refutation to this damn system so that I could play a, a game that I understand. Um. Because it's unfortunate to just get blown off the board. Like, I play Swinging Rook openings to avoid the tactical insanity that can occur in Static Rook openings. But here, like, I, I got greedy, I guess. I'm not sure. 48, you don't want to have to drop generals to defend so passively. Uh, um, mm. yeah, this, like, Clearly, I had excellent chances here. I don't know what I was thinking. Yeah, so Alexi points out I could trade the rook for the bishop. Yeah, far easier, Sabaki. Yeah. Yeah, this seems pretty obvious in retrospect. And I considered it in like the ten moves leading up to this, and the moves after this, and even in the position itself, I considered it. I just chickened out. And I don't understand why. It's some horrible... I don't know. I guess just fear of the unknown. But it makes no sense. Like, yeah, here I'm attacking. I've got another bishop and a gold in hand. And I have... I don't understand how to attack with these pieces. And my opponent's preparing to, like... Hmm. Uh. Hmm. doesn't make any sense for me to be afraid. I have such a good position here.
Yeah. So. Yeah, I should have done this. This would have given me something to do with the position of the game. Ah, right. Since unlike most games of where I play Swinging Rook and I have a pawn back here somewhere. Here I can actually play the pawn to attack. Although they can play pawn to defend like they do here, but... Um, yeah, I don't see a continuation to my attack. I don't doubt that I have one, I just don't see it. No, I do doubt that I have one. Like, this is such... It's a four general castle. It's got three silvers, one gold. And while that's ongoing, I don't even have Nino Castle because um, I've attacked before building my castle. Hmm... But even in the game, when I end up moving up the silver instead of moving up the gold, that was another blunder. It's just sad. Mm. Mm. Here he can't make much progress. What about this? Is this not progress? How is this not progress? Mm. I, don't, I don't understand. What are we talking about? Um, yeah, I just tend to not see. It's not easy to spot the that this defensive resource, which also is a good attacking move, uh, exists. Yeah. Like, here they've got a dragon and another rook in the camp. And a pretty straightforward attacking idea of just smashing down this flank, but the horse can slow it down considerably. It's a pretty obvious idea, but it's just, it might not work. I don't get it. Oh. Oh, that's a cool fork. Uh, yeah. Okay. Okay, so I'm not just getting decimated here. I see.
Yeah. Dang. Well, it would have been nice to play it this way. It's not how it turned out. But it would have been nice. So... Yeah. Both spotting the peace activity and the pawn drop that forces the opponent to do this pawn drop in defense uh, sets the tone for the rest of the game. Um, and yeah, I have the tactical means to survive what they're throwing at me. Yeah. Pawn 5-6, forcing Pawn 5-8 is really nice. Also prevents Pawn 5-9 in the future, in case that ever became a resource. Uh... Yeah. Ah! Okay, Alexi recommends um, here. Yeah. Hmm. Is there a mate? I mean, there's certainly... A threat mate. Um, yeah, it's like, if I'm surviving here, it's not... I, it's hard to imagine, but maybe. <laughs> um, I basically have to play this to escape, or to attempt to escape this mess. Oh, crap. <laughs> that is strong. Wait. I mean, it looks strong. Uh, um, oh, nice. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah, during the game I missed that, but I'd already misjudged the critical position. Um, yeah, there's no surviving this at this point. <laughs> so I guess, um, yeah. Yeah, he's got uh, quite the army built up. Yeah, I wouldn't hesitate to do Rook Takes Gold there, even though I provoked him to do it. Um, yeah, I was trying to force some kind of error, because I'm just screwed. Um... But obviously this just dug me in deeper. Hmm. 
if I had a defensive gold, is there still a mate that can be forced? That I don't know. I mean, if I did, then I could just take the gold to use it for defense. Um, yeah. So because of these mates, I basically have to exchange the rook for the gold, and there goes my entire initiative. Plus, I give them a rook to attack with. Um... It's pretty cool. <laughs> so, yeah, are there other positions to look at? I wonder. Yeah, my gold drop was just atrocious. I thought I was doing magnificently and quite the opposite was true hmm Oh, this... yeah. It's just an illusion. Yeah, I basically encouraged my opponent's attack. Made it easier for them to attack, and then made it even easier still. Here, that silver drop is forced, but that's uh, too late. Yeah, this is a nicely played attack that I just invited to destroy me, and it destroyed me. So, yeah, that, that's just how that went. Um, it was a nice, I don't know, they played it well. Hmm. Yeah, that night drop forcing the silver drop was... I didn't first see it. Not sure that it matters because they have so many pieces anyway, but I just kept making things easier for them. I don't understand. Okay, so however long we are into the analysis now, we've hit on a point where we actually disagree. Um, I wonder if we'll have time to discuss it. <laughs> I hope we will. But I don't know what I'm going to say. 
Hmm. Oh, okay. I see. So he has a different evaluation than I had. Uh, hmm. I mean, my camp was a house of cards, as became quite obvious. Um, I definitely made my opponent nervous, but my camp actually was a house of cards. So, I'm not sure like where that leaves us here. I couldn't find any useful tactics. But apparently my opponent favors my position here. To me this seems like even. It's uncomfortable, but uh, it's even, I think. So, yeah, my rook is still pretty useless. I can drop pieces, but the dropped pieces also don't do anything. Hmm. I can trade my rook, apparently. Hmm. All right. There's some proverb about Sabaki, probably. I wonder. <laughs> like, all of my pieces... Oh, okay. Yeah, I could drop a bishop, but... Hmm. It's a game for both sides. Oh. Okay. I didn't like my position, but apparently this is actually an even game. Hmm. Like, this seemed like a position where I'm just forever going to struggle to find anything even resembling a plan. And my opponent is able to attack all my weaknesses easily. While also they have a castle, and I find still not done yet. Um, and so, okay. So there's another variation. Hmm. Yeah, I still wonder about this. Like, am I supposed to be allowed to get my silver? I don't know, either hitting the pawn in the center or up as we're suggesting here. Like, how much of a problem does that present? I guess the good news is this makes two opening lessons in one week. <laughs> so hopefully I've learned something from both experiences. Yeah, I was trying to figure out what the hell's going on here. Because this looks cool. I just don't understand it. It looks really cool, though. Hmm.
Hmm. I'm not totally convinced this is right, however. Well, no, okay, actually, yeah, I see tactics to save it. There's more than one way to make sure the opponent doesn't drop material instantly there. Yeah, this is, looks so wild, doesn't it? There's vulnerabilities on my side of the position everywhere. It's, yeah. I think Gota's side of this opening is just pretty intensely difficult. After the opponent plays rook 5 6, there's just way a lot to consider. And it takes me well out of uh, what I'm comfortable with. Maybe if I practice more or study it more or something, I'll have any clue how to handle this. But um, as it stands, it's pretty confusing. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. There's freaking tactics everywhere, but now we're on like move five or something where I admit that I have no idea what's going on. Then we could get opposite, or we could get wrong diagonal bishop or whatever going on. And I don't understand it either. Yeah. Well played. It's an exciting game. Alright, so... Um, yeah, we wrap things up with some sort of conclusion. Um, again, second opening lesson in a week. Um, so... Yeah... I missed many chances, ideas, opportunities, etc. Uh, perhaps eventually I'll have a better understanding of how to play this stuff. Sorry to disappoint, but I guess um, I guess I should just continue playing the weekly ladder as I have time for it, and uh, we'll see how we do. So thanks for watching. And have a good one.